Center. All right, so I'll go ahead and get started. Again, this is Grant McGar, owner and founder of Five Star BDM. Five Star BDM is a professional consulting and advisory group keenly focused on business development services for small to mid-sized businesses and entrepreneurs. Services include process improvement and operations, digital strategy and transformation, business intelligence and data analytics, digital marketing, and personal branding. Our business development and personal branding company has helped a number of professionals and organizations to optimize and grow. The result is more business, more opportunities, better reach, and positive outcomes. I'd like to introduce my colleague, Ariana Silcott, who will be monitoring the chat and will moderate the Q&A near the end of the webinar. Would you like to turn your camera on for a quick second, Ariana? Hello, everyone. Welcome. Excellent. So get your questions ready. People will be probably popping in and out, but we want to give an opportunity to uh, speak with uh, Dan, excuse me, with Denise as soon as we can. So, and now to today's webinar. Take control of your next, advancing your career through pandemic, protest, and other impacts. Denise Kegler began her impressive career as a television news reporter in Columbus, Georgia. She launched her corporate run at Reebok where she held progressive roles during her 17-year tenure. Those roles included director, vice president, and senior vice president. Denise broke through the first of several glass ceilings when she was named Reebok's senior vice president and chief communications officer, making her the highest ranking African-American at Reebok. Shortly after, the Adidas Group acquired Reebok in 2006. Denise was named Head of Global Communications for Reebok and Corporate Communications U.S. for the Adidas Group. Two years later, Denise was recruited by video game icon Nintendo to the role of Vice President of Corporate Affairs and was based out of its Redwood City, California offices. In 2009, Denise returned to Boston to reunite with her then-husband and two children who remained in Boston and was soon recruited by video game and entertainment startup, 38 Studios, to serve as its chief marketing officer. Two years later, Denise was recruited by medical device giant, Boston Scientific, where she served as its senior vice president of corporate affairs and communications. Among her accomplishments, Denise led the global rebranding of Boston Scientific and wrote its current tagline, Advancing Science for Life. In 2015, Denise's career was impacted when her Boston Scientific role was eliminated during a company reorganization. But just three weeks after leaving the company, Denise founded MDK Brand Management and began fulfilling her ultimate dream, helping others to fulfill theirs. Denise now works with clients to define their brand, craft their story, and achieve their professional or business goals. During her stellar career, Denise has worked directly with numerous A-listers, including Jay-Z, 50 Cent, Scarlett Johansson, P. Diddy, Allen Iverson, Venus Williams, and Pharrell Williams. Finally, Denise, who is also an adjunct professor, is the author of $40 and a Brand, How to Overcome Challenges, define, Defy the Odds, and Live Your Awesomeness. The book includes brand building steps, tips, and firsthand stories featuring numerous celebrities, including former President Bill Clinton, Beyonce, Oprah, and Will Smith. So for everyone here, who is with us on this webinar, you're about to attend a master class in career advancement with a true glass breaker. Someone who has advanced her career multiple times, including during challenging times, and more importantly, and is dedicated to helping others do the same. Denise is so excited to pour into you. 
So first sit back and let this motivational video get you pumped to take control of your next. Every passing minute is another chance to turn it all around. Never believe a prediction that doesn't empower you. How many predictions have been thrown at you your whole life? that do not empower you, you will wither away and die. Either physically die or your spirit will die as you just walk around the world like a carcass. It's just following the masses. You will be given a lot of titles in your life. You will be told so many different things. You must only listen to that which empowers you. See, it's not important how long you live, what's important is how you live. The first thing I believe you gotta do to turn yourself around is really take control of your mind. Or specifically, you gotta feed and strengthen the mind. Guess what? You're gonna make some mistakes. So the person who's never made a mistake hasn't done anything. You're going to make some mistakes if you want to do something out here. You're going to fall flat on your face. You're going to be criticized when you come out into the arena called life. You're going to feel awkward and stupid and dumb sometimes. It goes with the territory. But it's okay. Take charge of your own life. Then walk away from the 95%. Don't go where they go. Don't do what they do. Don't talk like they talk. Develop you a whole new language. Don't use their vocabulary. Don't use their excuses. Once you look back on it, you will never turn back. You will never go back to the old ways and the old language and the old neglect. Never. trying to be a little wiser than you were when you woke up. Discharge your duties faithfully and well. Step by step you get ahead, but not necessarily in fast spurts. But you build discipline by preparing for fast spurts. Slug it out one inch at a time, day by day. And at the end of the day, if you live long enough, most people get what they deserve. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, it's Denise Kegler. Taking charge of your life, taking control of your mind, take control of your next. So I am so thrilled to be here. So glad to have you here joining Grant, Ariana, and me. I know you could be spending your time this morning someplace else, so we really appreciate your spending time with us. Yes, it is a challenging time. There is so much coming at you, so much coming in your brain and your devices. Just look at these headlines. Job losses, mm, struggling businesses, coronavirus spreading fear, protests threatening livelihoods. I know there's a lot to take in these days, but despite everything, there are some positive things going on. You can reinvent your career, you can be resilient, you can grow and thrive during these challenging times. And I wanna be able to help you do that, to do all of these things. So before I can understand how I can help you, let's get to our first poll because I wanna to get to know you. I wanna to get to know where you stand in your career right now. So Grant is gonna launch his poll. Please take about 30 seconds to complete the poll and this will help me get to know you. So just take a few seconds to go ahead and complete the poll. And while you're doing that, I do want to highlight that it is okay 
to want to advance your career despite everything that's going on around us. So even if you have not been impacted either through the coronavirus or through the protests or any other impact, like I was, as Grant mentioned, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. Even if you haven't done that, if you have not had any impact, it's important that you recognize that it's okay to want to advance your career. It's okay to want to grow, to want to thrive, to be ambitious. And so as we go through this, this, this poll and the other polls we have and go through the program today, I want you to understand that. So here's the poll. So we see here, okay. So let's take a look at this. So most of you are employees below the VP level. A few of you are executives, business owners, a few, some of you are students. Um, some of you are in transition, which I was at a point in my career for sure. And um, some of you no impact in, yes, yeah, so some of you have been impacted. So I'll reiterate that even if you have not been impacted then, and you see other people around you being impacted, then it's okay for you to want to move your career forward, that it's okay for you to want more and to want to do more. And I wanna help you, help you do that. So thank you for sharing that insight into your lives. I'm gonna share some more insight into mine. Grant walked through my, my bio, but I'm gonna spend about five minutes walking you through the first chapter of my start. So I, as Grant mentioned, I started my career as a television news reporter. But before we get into that, I want to do something that I like when I see other people doing, when they do um, webinars, and that is to get rid of the PowerPoint and to talk more closely with you. So that feels better, that feels better. So welcome. So my start, my chapter one, so I did start my career as a television news reporter. And why that's interesting, I'm gonna take a step back and talk to you about my childhood, my upbringing. So I was an extremely shy introvert, very, very shy. In fact, it got so bad, middle school and high school, that when teachers would call on me to answer questions in class, I would be so full of fear, the thought of talking to anyone else besides my single mother, because I grew up in Washington, DC, two sisters raised by a single mother. If anyone else were to talk to me outside of my family, it just sent just chills of fear through me. So imagine being in middle school and high school and a teacher calls on you if you're a shy introvert like I was. It filled me with such fear that tears would start streaming down my face. Mm. Tears streaming down my face. So those of you, especially women on, on the call, you might remember your days in middle school and high school, and you're sitting there and you see a, another kid crying and those mean girls. Mm, yep, I had that too. So I, of course, as you can imagine, was a target of bullies because I was a weak link. I was a weakling. You could take advantage of me. So I was beaten up almost every day, robbed of my 50 cents that my mother would give me for the snack truck. It was hard, it was hard. And I hated high school. Some of you might be able to, maybe not be able to relate to my being scared that I would start crying or being bullied, but you might be able to relate to being, to just not liking high school. In fact, I hated high school. So I left home when I finished high school at 17 years old. I left home and I've never lived back at home. I'd never moved back. So I had been on my own since I was 17 years old. And when I mean on my own, I mean on my own, working, taking care of myself. And I put myself through college because I knew that I wanted more in my life. So I put myself through Emerson College in Boston. And when I say put myself through, I mean I paid for everything through scholarships, grants, student loans, and part-time jobs. And that was my college career, was going through four years of being in school and working to pay not only for my education, but pay to, for my apartment, for my groceries, for my utilities. I was literally an independent student. So now you now remember my being a shy introvert. So I decided that I was gonna major in broadcast journalism. Wow, can you imagine someone being a shy introvert as I was thinking about being on television? Well, I was a newsie. I was addicted to reading the news, watching the news because when I, because being shy, I was by myself a lot. And so I read everything. I was a news junkie. Washington Post was my best friend. 
And so I read a lot. So when I decided what I was going to major in in college and I picked journalism, one, because I loved reading the news. So I thought, well, I should be able, I want to be able to report the news. And I also knew that I couldn't go through the rest of my life being scared. So I forced myself to move forward and major in something that would get me out of this, this box I had put myself in by being a shy introvert. So I majored in journalism, broadcast journalism, and I got a job as a television news reporter at WLTZ in Columbus, Georgia, as you saw the logo and Grant mentioned. Now, what was great about that is I decided that I wanted to do something that was going to push me out and get me not to be scared anymore. I believed that I could do it. I had faith in myself and my ability to get out there and conquer my fear and become a reporter and talk to people. So I had to get out of my own head. I had to get out of my own way by doing this. And I did it. I became a television news reporter. Now, what was interesting about that is that I wasn't very good at it. I wasn't very good at it. I recognized that reading the news by myself in my bedroom was a lot different from getting on television and reporting the news. And I didn't have the passion for it as I thought I did. It, I don't know, it's the chicken or the egg first. I either did not have the passion, so I wasn't very good at it, or I wasn't very good at it, so I didn't have the passion for it. Either way, I made the decision that I was going to do something else, that I was going to reinvent my career. And that's exactly what I did. That's exactly what I did. So I am going to start sharing my screen again because I want to show you something. So this, now, the takeaway from the chapter one, the story I just shared with you, my beginning, my start, believe in yourself. Act as if no one else will. Now, that may not be true, but if there is something so energizing about thinking that you are up against the world and that you're going to do it no matter what because nobody believes in you. And that was sort of the, the, the strategy I took was no one believed in me, so I needed to believe in myself. And guess what? It worked because I did it. I conquered my fear and I became a television news reporter for the first part of my career. Don't be afraid to try something. There's a quote, a Mark Twain quote. I won't get it exactly right, but it goes something like in, in 20 years, you are going to regret more what you did not do versus what you did do. So imagine that. Don't be afraid to try something because you're going to regret what you did not try more than you will regret what you did try. So remember that quote, and that's what I did. I tried it. I turned out I didn't like it, turned out I wasn't very good at it, but I did it. And that was very empowering for me. And then it's about control of self-empowerment, by self-empowerment, taking control and making a decision on your own, either coming to terms and admitting that you're not good at something and trying something else, and then reinventing your career, it's okay to do that. There's something very empowering about making that decision on your own, except guess what? Except that you're not gonna be great at everything. None of us is great at everything. So accept that, that's very empowering. That's about control. So with that, we're gonna go to our next poll, which is focus on blocks. So I talked about my block being fear but I got through that block. I moved that block out of the way. That's the only way you're going to move to your next is to move those blocks out of the way or figure out a strategy around those blocks. And that's what I did when I decided to major in journalism, broadcast journal journalism, and I became a reporter. So what, if anything, is blocking your next? Let me see. What, if anything, is blocking your next? So I'll give you just a few seconds to complete this poll. What is blocking your next, if anything? And as you saw, my next was focused on fear, fear. Okay, so it's either nothing, fear, lack of confidence, don't know what I want next or something else or something else. So fill that in. And Grant is going to broadcast the results, blocks. What's blocking you? What's blocking your next? 
if anything. All right. So just one second, because I am curious about you and what could be. Okay, so nothing. So not many of you said nothing, fear. So some of you, yeah, you can understand my next for sure. Um, lack of confidence. I absolutely had it too. And, and it's probably the number one fear that people have is lack of self-confidence and don't know what you want next. And that is also something that is very um, common. Or, and then a few of you said uh, something else. But fear, lack of self-confidence are what usually blocks us from moving forward with our next. So with that, let's go to the second part, my next, because the first was my start. Now my next, this is the biggest part of my career was this part here, my, my corporate career. And I know so as we walk through the first poll, I know some of you are in-house, some of you have your own business, or few, some students, some of you are in transition. Uh, I've been, I could check off each one of those boxes as a corporate person, a business owner, or a student in transition. So I am pouring, and I will through this and through this program, through this webinar, pour my life lessons, my career lessons into you and address each of those um, areas. So this part of my career was the biggest part, this corporate part of my career. So you see here a photo with me. Um, meeting President Jimmy Carter. So you can imagine what an unbelievable experience this was. Now, this was in the lobby of Reebok's world headquarters. And there are, you can't see this, but above us, because the way the world headquarters was, was a huge lobby. And then there, there are stairs and a balcony that overlooks the, the entrance. It's, it was huge. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people are lining the stairs, lining the balcony for this big event. And I'm down with a few people greeting President Carter. This is this person, as I started out, being the shy, shy introvert. So again, I had to get out of my own way in order for me to do that. And what I'm gonna share with you now uh, to do much more. So again, let's get rid of the PowerPoint. Let's get more up close and personal so we can, so we can talk for just a second. And I am making sure I don't talk too long because I want to get to your Q&A. So my career, I um, found climbing that corporate ladder all consuming. And those of you who are in the process of trying to advance your career, climbing that corporate ladder, starting your own business, if you're in school, you know what that feels like. You pour everything you have, your heart and your soul, especially as you're climbing your career. My climb, my corporate life was all consuming. I traveled like crazy. I was traveling an insane amount of time doing launch events with A-list celebrities. At one point I was launching, I, I launched J, um, J, Jay-Z's, Sean Carter, Jay-Z's shoe, the S. Carter by RBK. And Jay-Z and I on, on a private, private plane through, flew to, to Europe to launch a shoe. I did launch events with Pharrell, with Venus, with Scarlett Johansson. It was all consuming. I, at one point through my career, when I worked at Nintendo, I was 100% travel. What does that mean? 100% travel, all by the way, raising two kids. I had a son and a daughter. Um, I have a son and daughter, they were younger. And uh, so I was juggling parent, you know, being a parent while, while climbing, thriving in my career. And when I worked at Nintendo, I, as Grant mentioned, I was at the Cal based in the Redwood City, California office, but I kept my home and my kids and my then husband, I'm divorced now, my then husband, they were back in Boston, which is where I am now. And so can imagine my jobs, imagine waking up on a, on a Monday morning and most of us just drive to work, not just, but drive to work. Maybe you have an hour long commute. I had a six hour flight to work. Um, and I did that and I had staff, I had an office in New York. So I had staff in New York. I had an office and staff in Redmond, Washington which is where Nintendo America is based. And then I was flying to Europe and to Asia and to even the U, U a -E, United Arab Emirates, yeah, UAE. So I was on 100% travel. 
I say all that because there was no balance in my life. And I know we career people like to believe the story we're telling ourselves inside our heads that we can have balance. And I'm here to say, and for you guys not to feel guilty, no, there is no, I, at least for me, there was no balance. Now, yes, I, I had it all. I had a family, I had kids, I had a home, I had a career, but that's different from saying, than saying you have balance. Because balance means that you can spend the exact amount of time in your career that you're spending with your family. And that just wasn't happening. I was spending more time climbing the ladder and creating my career. It's fact. But I will tell you that I was also making sure I, that my kids were, were well-grounded and healthy and happy. And I tried to make as many of their events as I could, although I missed a lot. I missed a lot of my daughter's soccer games and, and her baseball games and my son's basketball games. But there were some certain things I never missed, like my daughter's dance recitals. Those of you who are mothers, young girls, you probably can relate. We have young girls who do those dance recitals. I made every single dance recital. But there were certain sacrifices that I had to make as I was climbing that, that ladder. And I want you to, to know that it's okay if you're sort of struggling with that and you have a family, you're not sure you know, how much time it's okay. Do you feel guilty? Of course you feel guilty, but you have to make a decision. You have to make sacrifices as long as those sacrifices aren't hurting your family. My kids are grown now, they're in their twenties, um, healthy, happy, well-grounded, well-rounded adults. So as long as you can make sure that you're doing that, it's okay to not have balance in your life. It's okay to have some imbalance in your life. It's okay. Don't feel guilty about it, but you do have to make that, that decision. It is a personal decision. It's a sacrifice that needs, needs to sometimes, or there are sacrifices that sometimes need to be made. And I did make some sacrifices, but again, I made sure I checked in and make sure my kids were oh. Okay. And through it all, I realized through my career, the one important thing I know I figured out while I was climbing that ladder, how much branding plays a role, the importance of branding in your career, both in, as Grant mentioned, uh, corporate branding was part of my role at Boston Scientific among my responsibilities. And I rebranded, I led the rebranding, the global rebranding of Boston Scientific, and I wrote its tagline, Advancing Science for Life. So just an aside, if you, if you Google Boston Scientific or you see one of their commercials, they have a Watchmen ad airing now, and you see the basic science flop, you can say, hey, Denise Kegler wrote that tagline. But that was, again, that was all consuming. And that was a decision that I made as I was climbing the ladder. But personal branding is critical. You want to make sure, even in my business, I make sure, and I'm very um, uh, aware and cognizant of the importance of branding as I was rising through my career and even now as a business owner, I recognize that importance. So I do wanna make sure that I highlight that for you. So I'm gonna go back to my deck. This is my little, so takeaways from that section, if I wanna make sure I got all of this. So except in balance, uh, it is a personal decision. My life was not balanced as I was climbing that corporate ladder. I have more balance now. But, it, but um, then there was no balance and, I, and my kids were okay and, and everything turned out fine. So don't kill yourself for it. Be your own advocate. No one's going to fight harder than you for anything, nothing. No one's going to fight harder than you. So if you want something, like I wanted certain things in my career, I wanted certain um, responsibilities, I wanted to take on certain projects, ask for it. Women and people of color especially, we don't ask for what we want. Be your own advocate. Make sure that you know, if you don't know what you want now, but you find out later, go and ask for it. Make sure that you're fighting for it. Do more than expected. That's what I did a lot. And that's why I was able to break through um, I, I, I six, I think, six glass ceilings. I was able to break through in my career, including uh, two um, C-suite roles, uh, chief marketing officer and chief communications officer, because I did more than what people expected. And, you know, they say that's a cliche. It's not really. Um, that's how people um, rise in the ranks, not doing what is written on a sheet of paper or written in their job description. Mm -mm. It's doing more than what's written down. And sometimes it doesn't pay off. I get it. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you don't get what it is you want, even though you're working really hard. But 
in, in many cases though, you can, if you work really, really hard and you do more than what people expect you to do. And then as I ended that last section, recognize that branding matters. Your own brand matters, defining what you want your brand to represent. What is it that you wanna project? What do you want your brand to say about you? Um, when you walk into a room, what do you want people to say about you behind your back? What is it that you want to project? And that is key. In mine, um, I do have a brand. I, I won't say it now, but I do have a defined brand that I, that I talk to my clients about all the time. And it's up to you to define what it is you want your brand to represent because that is absolutely critical. Okay. So on now to this last poll which is focus on your next. So I walked through just briefly my next, which was um, that corporate piece. But now we're going into the last section. So I wanna get a sense of what your next is, what you want. And I know a few of you answered the poll and said you weren't sure what you wanted, but for those of you, or what you want, for those of you who are sure, um, or maybe you're not sure, just fill out the poll. Let me, let me know you're next. If you're not sure, please let me know if you are sure. But as this poll question says, what do you want? So check everything, what do you want? So do you want to be more fulfilled, which is important, I certainly did. Do you want to be promoted? If you're in-house working for a company, do you wanna be promoted? Um, do you want to, you know, find a, a job if you're in transition? Do you want to find a new job if you're working currently right now? Do you want to start a business? Do you want to grow a business? Or if you are completely, like you say to me, Denise, it's two thumbs up. I'm good. I'm good where I am. That's okay, too, and I'm happy for you. So what do, what's your next? What do you want? If being fulfilled is important, and I wasn't getting that in my, my first, my start. So here we are. Let me see what you guys wrote. So what do you want um, to be more fulfilled? Absolutely. And well, let me save that. I want to go back to that in a second. Um, to be promoted, a few of you, but so some of you want to find a, a different job or you want to find a job. And a good number of you want to start or grow your business. And um, so no one said they're all set, which um, I can relate to that because I don't know if if I'm even all set because I'm still looking for for more. There is a um, thank you, Grant. There is a um, there's a saying about the word success that I um, or believe. I guess there's something about the word success. So people ask me, you know, success, success. I say that I don't believe I the word I get the word. I don't believe that people ever truly successful unless you're ready to just you know retire because to me that says that you're done you're successful you're ready to you know go off into the sunset and relax until then you are constantly chasing more and more and more so i believe that people are always in the process of success but to get there means that you're done and i never want to get there so i believe in the process of success but i don't believe in being successful if you will um, and before I switch, move ahead, I'd wanna, I want to say something about fulfillment. There, there are some stats out there that, that talk about how few of us are actually fulfilled at work. There, is, there um, are a lot of people who are happy at work because maybe you make a lot of money, you're able to pay the bills, you, know, you have fun, you got great responsibilities, you travel, and you're happy. But there is a significant number, according to this, a couple polls I've looked at just in my research working with clients, that a lot of folks who are working and are happy are not fulfilled. They don't, they don't find meaningfulness in what they're doing. And there is a way to get at that. But um, it was interesting that a few of you said that, um, yeah, that you want to find fulfillment. And I get that too, which takes me to my, my next, my chapter three, because I wasn't finding true fulfillment. I was having fun. Of course, I mentioned just a couple of examples of my corporate world traveling and, and working with the A-list celebrities. I mean, I've been to the, the Oscars and, and I mean, all kinds of just great events, but, um, but there was something still missing. This was what was missing 
because I'm at a stage in my career where all of my experiences um, building brands and, and launching products and, and uh, traveling and working and strategizing all the work that I've done, I am now able to pour all of that into my company. And that's what brings me fulfillment is now my whole world, everything about my career is focused on you. That's it. I am 1000% focused on you, meaning individuals and companies, organizations, but people who are looking, people, whether it's a company, a business, or an individual looking to advance their business or their profession, their professional lives. That's what my whole commitment and focus and drive is all about doing. And this is what I'm great at doing. This is what I've done throughout my career, how I was able to rise in my career. I'm pouring all of that into my company and into a program I'm going to show you a little bit later. So right now, I'm a brand strategist and author. As Grant mentioned, I have a book, $40 in a Brand, How to Overcome Challenges, Defy the Odds and Live Your Awesomeness, which is an interactive book, which I'll talk about that in a second. Um, professor and career coach. So here's my company, MDK Brain Management. The website is there in my book, which is $40 and a brand is available. Of course, I got to do a plug at Barnes and Noble and Amazon. Okay, I'm done. Um, but the one thing about the book, it's an interactive book. And this is, it was so much fun writing this book because it, it has exercises and activities, brand building activities and exercises. And the last part of the book, I think the last maybe 50 pages, is a journal for you to document your own brand building uh, journey. And But before that, there are firsthand stories um, about my work, my own challenges, building my career, my, my childhood challenges. But most importantly, there are exercises that help you build your brand, develop your brand, define your brand in a way that's gonna help you achieve your goals. My company, MDK Brand Management, I founded that co this company, my company now, after I faced a career impact, after my role at Boston Scientific was eliminated. Actually, it's interesting, just a quick story. I was at a big, huge conference a while ago, years ago, in 2014, and I heard someone on the stage talk about, um, if you don't have your next chapter planned, you need to plan it. And I thought, I don't have my next chapter planned. Um, I, I was an SVP at Boston Scientific, and I figured, you know, this is always going to be. Well, I started... I started at this process, starting my company when I heard those words in 2014. So when my when I was facing an impact, I was I was 70% through founding my company. So I was able to jump right in. And I'm so thrilled that I did. So that's another thing. Plan your next for sure. Um, so uh, Ron is a, 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 a true um, glass breaker in his own right. And um, we have spent, uh, when we met many, many years ago, and he's just such a great guy. He's a, he's a, he's a former journalist at New York Times and, and um, Time Magazine, a couple other publications, and he has several books out himself. And um, he's been a true... Um, friend and a, and a great supporter of mine. Oh, I was going to say, uh, Denise, because when I first read that particular quote, we had not spent a lot of time together at that time. And as I read the quote, I became a true believer. You know, so when you read these words, Denise is a brilliant marketer and brand strategist. She knows, excuse me, she shows us not only how to stand out in a crowd, but how to tower above it. And that's how you get to that next level. I thought that was a beautiful quote. Mm, thank you. Thank you, Grant. So what I, and, and, I, and I'm, I'm so appreciative of, of Ron for those kind comments. Now, what I want to do is I want to help you, those of you watching live, those of you watching the replay, I want to help you stand out and tower above. So what do I mean by that? So let me start with this program, Mainstream to top tier. This is a 10 week virtual career advancement program that I have poured everything into, everything I know, everything I'm great at, everything I experienced, some tough lessons I learned along the way throughout my 20, 30 year career, which includes my owning a business for the last five years. 
This online program has five modules um, and you get five live group coaching sessions with me, five. So it's a 10 week program. One week you get the module, one week you get me live, one week the module, one you get me live. You can uh, aim your smartphone at the QR code. It's gonna take you to the web or through my, the journey, if you will. Uh, the customer journey for this program, or you can go to mainstream to top tier.com. But there are several deliverables, including a customized playbook or storybook. And this was a strategy that I used to grow my career over the past 30 years, everything that I've learned and some, some pitfalls that you can avoid because I went through them. So now I'm helping you avoid them. The, the thing I love about the group coaching sessions is only coaches you through what you would have heard and learned in the modules, but whatever's happening in your world, in your career that week or that day, bring them to these coaching calls with me and I will help you get through some of those challenges. Um, but I'm so excited by this program and I hope that you find that a program like this is on your list. It starts in January, so it's a good time. So the beginning of the year, January 5th, I think is the first day of the um the, the program. So kick off 2021 with a bang by focusing on you. Now that program, mainstream the top tier is focused on mid to upper level executives and own, people who already own their business primarily and looking to grow their businesses. If you're looking to take it to the next step. So if you're already in-house, you're mid or upper career, but you want to take it to the next level, C-suite or executive role, which, which I've held both, then this program is for mostly for, for you. Not, there are some um, other folks who can join it, but that's really what it's focused on. Now, I didn't forget about the students on, on the call or anyone who's just starting out or in transition. This program is for you. It's called Before the Break. It's a four week virtual career development program. So it helps you develop your career. And as you see here, before you can move up and through, you gotta look inside and out. It's all about understanding yourself because you do have to understand yourself before you can climb that ladder, whether it's corporate in-house or whether it's your own business, it's still your career. And so this program is a step before um, you can do that. That's why I call it before the break. It's all about understanding you as um, so because before you can help a company or help advance you know, your own company or grow your own company, it's important to understand yourself. So this has five modules, five mini modules, and you get one live group coaching session with me. QR code, scroll, um, aim your smartphone at it. You can do it now if you want, although I don't want you to not listen to me right now, but you can, own, you can scroll or aim your smartphone right there at that QR code, or you can vi visit before, that's letter B, number four, thebreak.com, and start that journey. There, there are two deliverables with this, including your own SWOT analysis, which I think and believe is so important that you understand your own SWOT. If you work for a company, you have your own business, you probably did a SWOT for your, for your company or for the company you work for. This is all about you understanding what makes you tick before the break. That starts, that, oh, one last thing about before the break. This is, an, um, this is a monthly program. It restarts the beginning of each month. I'm in a session right now in October. The session ends the last week of October and the new session starts on November um, second, or what does it say here? Yeah, November 2nd, which is the first Monday. So every, the first Monday of every month, the program starts again. So if you sign up for the program mid-month, you just wait until the following, the first Monday to actually jump in and start the program. But I'm excited about this program as well. And this is for, as I said, more um, entry level uh, to mid-career um, students, people in transition. Um, will find this program very helpful. So the, the, I can't say more simply than this. The key takeaway is all about investing in your next because we all want to do that. I've done, I'm still doing, I'm still investing in my, in my next. And I think that for, for you to advance, it does, it, you mentally, emotionally, it's all about investing, spending time and focus on your career. Now, the last thing I'll say before I turn it back over to Grant is this. So we do have a number, another program webinar coming up 
on November 10th. This is a panel discussion, so it's not just going to be me talking. Um, there's going to be panels. So I'm really excited about this one. So mark your calendars, Tuesday, November 10th, same time, 1130 to 1230. Okay, so mark your calendars. And I will say thank you. If, um, if you want to get in touch with me or say say connected with me, please either join my MDK Brand Management Facebook group and I do or Facebook page. Follow my page, and I do have a group Facebook group called Glassbreaker. Glassbreaker. So if you want to join that group, um, that would be great. It'd be great to to. It's a private group, so I do have to approve everyone who comes in. But it would be great to have you there. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Grant. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you, Denise, for first sharing your story. You have an incredible story. I, I was on that journey with you. I was on that flight with Jay-Z. You just didn't see me there. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I got you. <laughs> it was very thoughtful, very inspiring. We're going to go into our Q&A at this point. So if Ariana is ready, I think we've got some Q&A there. If we've got a raised hand, I can take you off of mute and you can ask your questions live. Yes, but also, Grant, hold on. Before we oh. actually move on, remember, Denise did bring up four tips. Um, and I wanted her to touch on that before we did the Q&A. Sounds ah, good. That is right, Ariana. Thank you. So I did say in the, oh, right in the, um, in the invitation, there are four things. So the first thing, if I can remember, the first thing, what for another four-letter word you should not say? And I catch myself at times, too. And that word is just. J-U-S-T. Stop saying that word. If you're saying it, and it's easy to say it, I think the word just, just, it devalues whatever you're saying. So get rid of the word just. It's not just. It could be only, but don't say just. So that's the first thing. The other thing is what to do to, before you are, go to an in-person meeting, what you should do. And I know there's not a lot of that going on right now, but there is some. And if you're going, you're probably wearing a mask. But let's say, let's fast forward when at one time, one day, we are going to be without masks. That day is going to come. The first thing or the thing you should do, and it's going to sound kind of icky maybe or so, I don't know. Check your breath and check your teeth. When I say check your breath, because the worst thing is if you're talking to somebody and you've got, you know, that happening, you, they're not going to hear anything you have to say. They're not going to see your beautiful clothes, your makeup, your hair. All they're going to be is turned off because you didn't take care of the most important thing, which is breath. So I'm like, do this. Breathe inside your hands, smell your breath, check your teeth, because those things can just make people just turn off, especially when you talk about branding. When I mention that, um, that's a critical one. Um, and what was the other one? Oh, the one thing to keep by your nightstand. I keep my phone by my nightstand with my notes pages. So pen, paper, because sometimes when you're laying back and you're relaxing, you let your brain kind of just relax for the evening. That's when you get the most ideas. So, oh, and, and I used to do this years ago. I would try to remember. I closed my eyes and said, okay, Denise, just remember this when you wake up. And I'm like, no, because then you're waking up. You, you can't go to sleep because you're so focused on trying to remember what it is, what you, what you were trying to remember. So just get up and write it down. Just get up and write it down. Notepad, pad and paper, your phone, notebook. That's critical. Oh, and the last thing is what to keep in your car. Um, I keep deodorant in my car. Deodorant. Mm -mm, I said it. I said the D word, deodorant. Because the worst thing, because sometimes we get all hurry, hurried out the house and we're like, oh, shoot. And so I have used it. I will admit it because I'm, I'm, I'm a straight shooter. Um, if we work together, then you'll know me. I'm a straight shooter. And more than once I have forgotten. And I, but I don't stress because I'm covered because I keep it in my car. So keep that in your car. All right. So we got that done, Ariana. <laughs> All right, perfect. Thank you, Denise, for that. Uh, thank you, Grant, for uh, walking us through that. We do actually have a couple of questions for the Q&A, but we also have a raised hand. So I want to get to the raised hand first. Um, I'm sorry if I don't pronounce your name correctly, um, but it's Benji. Um, she has her hand raised. So um, Benji, if you can unmute yourself um, and ask your question for us, please. Benji, can you hear us? Can you unmute for us, please? Grant, do you have to do it or does she do it? I, uh, no, I, she has the ability. She just had to take herself off of mute. Okay, Benji. Is that Benji? Maybe she's trying. Okay. 
There she goes. Is that her? She posts this. Can you read her question? Uh, nope, she just has her hand raised. But until she figures that out, um, we can actually move on to the next question here um, that I have in the Q&A. So as soon as she unmutes herself, we can answer her question. Um, but the one that I have here is by an anonymous attendee. It says, what is your best advice for someone with fear or lack of confidence as a block? Have you ever experienced these blocks before? Mm -hmm. Yes, both. Um, fear and lack of self-confidence for sure. Um, fear, you have to you have to develop different strategies. So I speak a lot. I mean, I speak a lot. And when I first started rising through my career and I would get asked to speak in, in front of, you know, thousands of people, I would be terrified getting up on that podium and speaking. I got a lot of awards when I was climbing the ladder and breaking through glass ceilings. I was giving a lot of receiving awards. The one thing I did, and it's, you, you decide how you're going to handle it, but because I would be so scared to speak, I would come bearing gifts. So I worked at consumer products companies. And so I would put in an envelope um, gift certificates to different products at the companies I worked for. And I would have the um, organizers put the, the envelopes under the chairs in the room. Because at first for me, I don't know about you guys, the first part for me of being scared and, and overcoming my confidence happen in those first few seconds or having that lack of confidence and being scared happen in those first few seconds as long as I could take the the attention away from me for a few seconds and I could kind of breathe and catch my breath and and stop my heart from just beating outside of my chest and so for the first few seconds when I would say everyone look under your seat and see if you won then then for a few couple minutes everybody would be so excited and then I became like the most the most loved person in the room because I just given away all this product and during that time I was able to calm myself down now obviously that doesn't work for everyone but find out what works for you in the situation that you're in and keep doing things over and over again what I tell my clients who are afraid have fear at least in public speaking is do a little bit at a time if your fear has nothing to do with public speaking then I'm a huge believer in mentors and sponsors and coaches and they can help you specifically and I do that in my business in my program the mainstream the top tier and before the break programs will help you overcome that as well I hope I answered your question Perfect. I hope you, um, thank you for answering that question. Um, our next question is actually from another anonymous attendee. Um, what is your favorite memory from your career? My favorite memory from my career, um, I love helping, uh, even when I was in corporate, I um, would help students. And I remember, I, I forget what position I was holding, but I got an email from a student. It's funny that you asked that because I, I hadn't thought about this in a while. I um, got an email from, and I went to Emerson College in Boston, and I got an email from an Emerson student. Who, she wasn't a student at the time. Well, I think she had just gotten accepted, but she could not afford the, the tuition. And she was about to not be able to accept going to school and she needed help, financial help. And she wasn't asking me for money, but I was on the board of Emerson at the time. And she had sent out a lot of emails to every board member I think she sent an email to. And all she wanted was someone to get word to the admissions office that she needed and the financial aid office that she needed help. And she had her whole bio, her background. And I, of course, I came from a single parent household, poor, in Washington, D.C., Southeast, for those of you who might be in the, from the D.C. area, I was raised in Southeast D.C., and if you know D.C., that is not one of the rich areas. Um, so I sent an email to the um, admissions office and the financial aid office, and I pleaded her case, and I said, I would like for you to please figure out a way so this young lady can accept her admission to Emerson College and go forth and make Emerson proud and whatever it is I said. Then I, I sent her back a note. Oh no, I think she then emailed me probably a couple weeks later and told me that she got an email from Emerson and they had given her um, some financial aid and worked a way for her to get a loan. And she was just so happy. She said I was the only one um, who replied and responded to her email. But anything I can do, and this is because I can relate to some of the challenges that young people have, and this is what I pour into my company right now, but um, that was, so my best experience actually isn't work-related, but it's when I can help people. That's amazing. Actually, one of our submitted um, questions before the seminar was actually, you know, did you have a mentor or a sponsor, and you know, how many did you have um, for all the young professionals out there? 
Mm -hmm. I, all of them. I had mentors, sponsors, and coaches. I still have a mentor who was my mentor back in, uh, joined, became my mentor back in 1991 when I was the director of communications at Boys and Girls Clubs. And that was my first, that was my, after I left television, I went into um, communications through nonprofit. So I spent um, some time in nonprofit. And um, my mentor, Jack Agnew, who owned a PR agency, and he was on the committee, the communications committee for Boys and Girls Clubs of Boston. Um, he's my mentor today. In fact, we're having lunch next week. So that was how many years ago was that? 30 years? I don't even know. But um, but he's I love him to death. Um, and so, yes, I'm a huge believer in mentors and coaches and sponsors. And if you don't have one, people ask me, well, how do you get one? Ask. But you got to live up to your your part of the deal, too. I mean, if you if you find a mentor, know that that mentor is going to give you their time. So you have to make sure that you are living up to your part of the bargain. If you schedule meetings or phone calls or Zooms, please make sure that you that you're doing it. And that's amazing. It's all about relationships. Mm -hmm. so that's the message. Um, our next question for is from another anonymous attendee. What is your advice for someone who feels like they have outgrown their current job? Outgrown their current job? Well, that's interesting. So I, I probably want to understand more um, what makes you have outgrown it. But I guess we all do that. I think um, I probably did that in my in my earlier part of my career. Then it's probably time for you to to look for another role, take a step back and see what kind of skills you have, how those skills might match up with some of the industries that are on fire right now or industries that are projected to come back after the pandemic is either over or after people feel more comfortable coming out. So do a lot of research. Um, if you need to go back to school to, to attain some of the skills that are necessary for you to break into an industry that you really want to work in, work in, then go ahead and do that as well. There are all kinds of programs that are available right now. So if you feel that you've outgrown your career, get on Google and start doing some searching, what are they, surfing, I guess if, if that was probably dating myself with that word, but we remember we used to surf the net back in the day. But um, just do some research and see if there's some, not just, I said it, see, that's what I mean. I catch, I catch myself too. But do some research and see what skills you have that match industries that you want to work in. But don't be, don't feel stuck in a career. Move, as I said, in my first start of my career, when I recognized that I was not very good at being a reporter, I took control and made the decision to do something else. So make the decision to move on and do something that fulfills you. Sounds good. Thank you for answering that question. We actually have one more question um, before our time runs out here. Um, this is from an anonymous, another anonymous attendee. They said, as someone who is in transition, how do you own your skill set when your previous employer didn't give you much room to own your task and make the outcome of the task be your achievement to show that you can, you know, be qualified to bring in another opportunity? You know, how do you go after that? Hmm. It's a mouthful of a question. <laughs> um, yeah, how do you go? So how do you go after a career or responsibilities when your boss is not letting you take on those yeah. responsibilities? When your previous employer didn't give you the chance to take own of your own task and you're in the middle of transition, you know, how do you move from that space into a new space or a new uh, part of a job? So what I did when when um, what I knew um, after I heard those words from the stage of this big conference, uh, that we should always have our next chapter planned and I didn't have my chapter. And I knew that man branding was my passion. Branding, brand management, corporate branding was my passion. I started doing volunteer branding workshops. And so, and my kids would come with me and I would go into the, the communities in Boston. I partnered with them, the um, NAACP Boston, and I facilitated pers free personal branding workshops because I, I, it was something that I really had a passion for. But then I went to, I was a full-time SVP at Boston Scientific, and I went to the, the ERG heads at Boston Scientific, those of you who work in corporate, you know, employee resource groups, the affinity groups, Hispanic, Black, women, vets. And I went to the heads of the ERGs, and I said, hey, I want to do some personal branding workshops. But the company wasn't doing anything like that at all at, at that time. And I started doing personal branding workshops on my own time at Boston Scientific. Then I partnered with the NAACP, and I did some we work with the Urban League, no, United Way as well. So there are ways, find what you're passionate about. And if you can't do it within your 
job, go out, volunteer, find a nonprofit, find a community organization, and start developing or honing those skills that you're really good at. Either you can leave your job and do that full time, but a lot of people aren't in that position, or keep doing it and, and making that part of your community service and giving back that way. But if nothing else, you're going to really fine tune a skill that you want to develop. But more importantly, you're going to find work that fulfills you and then you can decide how you want to move forward. Sounds good. Thank you so much for asking that question. Um, that was our last written question in the Q&A section. Um, were we still able to get Benji to unmute? Benji, no, can you hear us? No? I don't think so. I think uh, we'll we'll get to her later. We'll okay. ask her. We're we're over time at this point. So number one, I want to thank everyone for for coming out and taking an hour out of your day to visit with Ariana, Denise, and I. It has been a pleasure. This has been a recorded session, so you will get the opportunity to uh, listen to it again. I, I encourage you to invest in yourself. This is what this is about. Invest in yourself. Visit the main the uh, website for mainstream to top tier.com or if it's more fulfilling for you at uh, before the break.com. Uh, we will have another webinar on November 10th, so look for information around that. And if you are interested in the before the break, that's going to start this calendar year, Monday, November 2nd. We're mainstream the top tier, will start in January, so you've got a little runway. So again, I want to thank everyone, everyone for, for, for joining us. And I look forward to uh, connecting with you again. And if you need to contact me directly, send me an email at grant.magaw, that's M-C-G-A-U-G-H, at five, the number five, star, edm.com. Enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you very much.